What's up, party people from the fifth dimension? My name is Angelo, and I'm here with my homeboy, Ra Earth. What's up, everybody? So, Ra is a living legend in the circles I roll in, and uh, he's uh, a big a big crown in the Purium business. But before that, Ra was running the gym game in LA, in downtown. You own, how you own a bunch of gyms, right? So, uh, yeah, most notably two big, functional fitness facilities and uh, I briefly own a yoga studio and a ballet bar studio also. Wow and you're you used to be a hockey player back in the day back in Michigan right? From three years old yep. So I was a big fighter in that, in that sport. <laughs> yeah so also another thing about Ra you might not know uh, is he's a CrossFit champion. Tell us about your CrossFit days and where you're at now with that. Yeah, I wouldn't really describe it as champion on camera, but yeah, in my heart, I'm a champion always, right? Uh, but uh, yeah, during my CrossFit days, I owned a few CrossFit gyms, and uh, I was really injured from hockey, and I guess the most notable thing that I'll bring to this, to this conversation is that I was doing very well in the sport of CrossFit with very minimal amount of training. So there were competitions that I would do after not training for eight months, just kind of chilling out at the beach all day. And I would show up to these competitions versus guys that were working out all day long every day. And I would, I would qualify above them. Uh, and it took me many years to figure out why that was happening because I own gym so I was an exercise guy so I was like if I'm not exercising how am I remaining strong and pushing past there's a dead nerve in that arm so that's like one of the reasons why I quit working out is because I have a dead nerve here I've got three tears in this shoulder three tears in this shoulder the labrum not the shoulder but the actual labrums are torn six times I have a dead nerve in my in my uh my knee right here and so it hurts to work out but for some reason I could compete at a very high level and I had to explain that to myself and what I found out is that me going to the beach every day feet in the sand breathing fresh air getting the negative ions from the water sunlight that was actually giving me access to power that you don't get if you're inside all day long and very real access to power where I could somehow, at the time I didn't know, but now I'm certain on how I was doing it and the forces and how they work, but somehow I was transmuting that raw elemental energy into physical strength. And, and, uh, and Ra is actually related to the sun, like your name Ra comes from the meaning of the sun god, is that right? Yes, yes. So let's go back a little bit Ra. Um, how did you get grounded in athletics? I mean, I know you played hockey, but what got you started with sports and like, you know, wellness, have healthiness and, uh, and then now with nutrition, how did you begin on that road? So I played hockey since I was three mm -hmm. and I was very sick my entire life. I was the smallest kid in my school growing up. I, uh, had headaches every week at least. I remember my entire childhood massive headaches uh, you know my parents just fed us whatever right mac and cheese and ramen noodles and life is mcdonald's yeah nothing <laughs> like zero percent organic i was the smallest kid ever i played hockey eventually i was getting hurt because i'm really i was a really aggressive hockey player but my body couldn't withstand the impact so i was that's where these shoulder injuries come from getting checked in the boards yeah. So why, why were you such a scrappy young man? Because you go to school as the smallest kid in the class and then you get bullied. Yeah. And then you put ice skates on and equipment and you actually, it's legal to hurt other people. That fulfilled me. Mm. And so the combination of being the smallest kid ever and also not hitting puberty till I was 19. The combination of that and then being put into a sport where fighting was legal it's like it's part of the game that became my favorite part of hockey and so 
my mindset was there before my body was and then I had to start working out in order to match my desires to hurt people. So I'm speaking very frankly, that's that's where I was at. That's okay. I had been pick, picked on, you know, in elementary school, not just by the boys, like I was so small that girls would even like chase me around. I remember this. Um, now they're chasing them around, but different, in a different way. So, it's all you know. a fractal. Yeah, man. You know, I can identify with that too, man. I was a late bloomer myself. Yeah. I was bullied a lot when I was younger. I, but um, so the transition from you becoming, you know, this hockey guy to this gym owner, how did that kind of transition? So, so hockey, hockey satisfied my competitive desire. It's all I really cared about. So then when hockey started winding down and the choice was continue playing hockey professionally, minor, minor league stuff. How old were you at this time? 22, 23. Or at the time I had a degree in psychology and exercise science. Exercise science was to support the ability to be strong and dominate other people, something I missed my entire life. And then the psychology was to explain to myself why people are the way that they are and why I am the way that I am, right? Because I was confused. Like, how can you be put in a reality where like everyone picks on you? Like, why is this happening? So that was my interest. So it was play hockey some more or move to California and start a gym. So I was already interested in exercise then. And so I moved to California and I, through a long journey, did what it took. And I eventually owned and operated several gyms in downtown LA, which Every time I would drive into downtown LA, it was just this wow moment. Looking at these big buildings and just like a kid from Michigan is now yeah. like kind of like well known in the community, well known worldwide for what I did in, in the sport and even in the business world. And, and so that's how I got into the gyms. But I know the next question is how is the transition from being the gyms to out of the gyms, right? And that back to what I was saying, is that I was hanging out at the beach, not exercising, going to competitions where you're supposed to prove your ability to exercise, that's what CrossFit was, and having a conflict because I wasn't training and I was still beating people that were training. So then it was like, well, what am I selling here? I'm selling the non-efficient way of making yourself strong. And so I became more interested in sunlight, earth, oh, and nutrition. Also that whole entire time, very, very into nutrition, into superfoods. Uh, and, and at first, that's all I thought it was, was I was eating better than everyone else, because that was easy to believe. But then I would go a year without working out, show up to a comp CrossFit competition and take first place. And just be like, how? And one year I spent 10 months training three athletes world-class athletes I coached them for like six hours every single day didn't do anything I was coaching them then the competition season comes around and I beat them all and I'm just like I watched I watched on the sidelines these guys train hard for this whole time I'm not a better athlete than them how is this happening and so eventually I really had to yeah, I came back to the elements, to the light source, right? Like our sun is very, very po powerful. Mm. And that's essentially the power that, that fuels us. And so how can we fuel ourselves either with the raw, the raw baseline materials of sunlight, earth, air, water, and consciousness. And then the secondary version of that is what we're eating. So let's back it up just a little bit. How did you jump from you know having kind of this napoleon complex to becoming like this you know fighter making up for lost time to getting into kind of a spiritual practice where you kind of get connected with nature and things like that go a little deeper on that like how did you kind of become the person that you are today where i see you as very in tune with a lot of uh you know metaphysical elements so i mentioned i studied psychology right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well what i noticed because i you guys heard me say I studied psychology to find answers for the human being, why humans are the way that they are. I never really wanted to go to college because I never wanted a job. That's a big part of my journey is that school teaches you about jobs. I quickly found out that schooling was uh, inefficient to the real lessons that you learn in a sport. In sports, you learn real lessons, right? With real tangible feedback. 
you do something wrong, you'll get hurt in the sport of hockey. You get feedback from your coach, you get feedback from your other players, you get feedback from getting cut from a team or making a team. There's like immediate feedback for your work. In school, you go to school and you're just going to school to be able to take a test to get some weird grade that doesn't mean anything. So at a very young age, I was like, this school thing is not working for me. And so I, I never wanted a job because I never resonated with the whole school environment. And the school environment is just teaching you, just funneling you into that nine to five job. So when it comes to like going to college, I didn't want a job. So I didn't want to go to college but nothing was happening. So I'm like, well, I'm just gonna study human beings. I'm gonna study psychology and exercise science. I show up to college thinking that I'm gonna learn about psychology and of course, not existent, right? You learn about just the classic textbook, abnormal psychology stuff and, and it just, just all the stuff, the history of it, nothing really applicable. And so I went home and this is when pirating was a thing. And so I would just pirate uh, seminars and download books and courses about all sorts of things and one day when I was 19 years old so that's what I was doing I never bought textbooks in school I just went home and one time I come across this uh, this meditation technique that had to do with essentially seducing your reality uh, meditating down to the frequency of the earth and then going in a dream state and popping up into other people's dreams and uh, having access to their subconscious. And so that was my introduction into meditation and it worked. So because I was shy, because I got picked on and talking to strangers is, is really difficult to me, that was my answer of how I can attain people to talk to me is I would just make myself be very attractive to them in their dreams and then they would approach me in real life. Uh, so I had been screwing around, messing around, experimenting, going down rabbit holes in these, these other realms for going on 20 years now. And so that's all in the background of all of this other journeying stuff. And so then I'm highly into the physical realm with the fitness and then like, I'm like, man, this gym stuff's not really important, but I have this other asset, this other knowledge base of initiate scientists or sciences, you know, like the African sciences, all of the like ancient occult secret stuff, extraterrestrial stuff, like all of that stuff I'm very into also. It's just been background closeted knowledge. Once I realized that physical reality and physical training is, is, is bendable, then, then, then like everything, everything can get resituated and I, and I retaught myself how to live as a human being.